Hello there, and um, welcome to this hobby update. Uh, just a short video really to go through um, my progress on units for my American Civil War Epic Battles collection. Um, now some of these units were on the uh, latest battle report on the channel. So if you go and watch that, you'll see these in action, so to speak. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to get a bit more close in and show what I've been doing uh, beforehand. In fact, some of these models were literally, the paint was still drying when I got them on the, uh, on the tabletop. So as is the way. So firstly, um, I managed to get a Zwar's Regiment completed. So I picked up one of the uh, plastic box sets with cavalry Zwar's in it. Um, there was, on the flag sheet, there were three regiments available. This is the 9th New York, which is the Hawkins Regiment, Hawkins Zwarves. Uh, I quite like these, um, What for the Union anyway, it gives a bit of a splash of colour on the table. Um, because obviously the Union are quite obviously all blue. So this gives you a little bit of contrast for those. Uh, they're nice figures as well. Um, and quite a simple paint scheme really. They're mainly blue anyway. Uh, it's just really the red head scarves, cummerbund, you got the white gaiters, so they really didn't stand out against the other troops that I've got painted. Um, also, um, brass buckles, etc. They look really nice, and they do add a bit of splash of colour, as I say. Um, the detailing on these figures is quite difficult. There is some nice intricate de detail on the fronts of the um, tunics, but it's really hard to pick it out, I'd say. I mean, I'm not the greatest of painters, I'm all right. Um, but I managed to get some of that detailing in. Um, as part of this, quite pleased with that. So they're good, and they've added a bit of colour. I've got another one on the way, so I'm doing the the next one. I can't remember which regiment this was. This was, but just slight differences in a lighter blue, um, and this time the, the kind of pantaloons or trousers are red. So we're getting a, a bit more variety on the table between the two regiments. Um, so halfway through these now, so just um, finishing these off, and then we can get the back ranks done. So they have a nice two. Zouave regiments, which would be nice. Also, um, I've picked up some new uh, individual models um, from Peter Pig, which is a slightly odd name, but it's a company that does 50 millimeter um, uh, models, and they've got a really nice American Civil War collection. And um, I went onto that and had a look at what was available. And what I've done is, um, if you saw my last video, my last hobby video, I showed you I was doing the commander bases. And the last ones were larger, these there's 60 mil, and that was the kind of commander in chief. Um, so it was Lee and Grant. I mean, you can use them for what you want, really. They don't need to be Lee and Grant, but they're just larger. So these are 40 mil bases, um, and it allows you to get kind of a commander. So this is uh, Mead, um, but also then a flag bearer. So this is from, so this is Warlord Games, and this is, oh, sorry, this is Peter Pig. And I really like the Peter Pig stuff. Now it is bigger, it's, it's true scale 15 mil, whereas the Warlord stuff is a bit smaller. But saying that, I mean, I'm six foot three, and one of my mates is five foot nine, five foot 10. So you do get variances in the size of men, horses, whatever. So I think on, when it's down on the table, you can't really see a difference, although they are slightly larger. But what I do like about Peter Pig is it's kind of faction specific. So the Warlord stuff, apart from the leader models, the sprues are very generic, whereas the Peter Pig stuff is kind of styled on the actual, on the forces. So that's the Confederate flag bearer. And as you can see, they're completely different, different pose, different uniform. Uh, some sergeant stripes in this one as well. This is Jackson, by the way. And again, slightly bigger, but I don't think it's a, a big problem once they're on the, on the tabletop. And again, I've used my um, standard basing, which is a few tufts and some flowers just to spruce it up. So these, the idea behind these, well, I want these as being kind of divisional commanders. I mean, they could be break, brigade commanders, it doesn't really matter. Um, but as the games are getting bigger and I'm getting more and more units and brigades, um, I want to start having multiple divisions and you've got sort of slightly bigger bases for the divisional commanders and then the commander in chiefs on the 60 mil base. So you've got that kind of rank in terms of base on base size but what was nice about peter pig as well i picked up a couple of these so these were i've got a couple of other generals to paint you get these general packs and i think you get three figures in it but they had these like adc models um aide de camp yeah and 
you could put them on the you could have a larger base and put these on with these models yeah but i thought actually these are really nice alternatives for the brigade commanders because again the ones with the, you get from warlord are very generic and that's fine i mean there's nothing wrong with them um, but i just quite these just look like decent like just commander models so i put them on 25 mil bases um and again they're pretty their uniforms are kind of styled more towards the factions so like this guy's got his um got the gloves on um and, the, and there's slightly different poses as well sorry let me focus there slightly different um, poses um to that one which is the confederate one so really like them really nice and just add to, again just a little bit of variety on the tabletops there's nothing everything's not the same so we've got a couple of these um which are brigade commanders now that's good and again you can just see the size of difference so you've got the you know, brigade division and then the bigger one which i did in my previous hobby update was the uh commander in chief so what else have i been doing i did um my first cavalry regiment um, these are the plastic ones you got with um that brigade box that they're doing for warlord uh again i was quite happy with these now what i did with these i did four horses on a stand and again tried to mix up the color schemes a bit for the confederates Found this kind of lighter blue uh, colour scheme for the cavalry as well to break it up a bit. And again, that's a Peter Pig model in the middle there. So, I mean, you can't, I mean, you can see it's a little bit bigger, but it's not outrageous. I think it's, I think it works fine. And again, what I do with these, I kind of have four, four main horse colours. So I've got kind of um, like a, a, a black pony, uh, or horse, sorry, uh, kind of lighter brown, darker brown. And I just kind of just mix those in. Uh, so a lighter brown one there, mottled, darker, black, etc. Then just added a few flashes of white on it. It really does break it up. And these are all contrast paints again, really simple, not hard to do at all. There's no magic involved. Just um, the only thing I do is a Zenithal um, undercoat, which is the black spray, then a white spray coming from the top, um, which kind of gives you something like that. And that way the contrast does pick up on the highlights a lot easier. Um, I got that from uh, the painting tutorial that uh, Stuart Mack does for Miniature Realms. If you want to check out his channel, it's really good. I've got no affiliation to him, but I just followed his painting guide when I first started these and I've just kind of gone from there really. So they're really nice. I really like those. Um, and then I did the dismounted version. Now these I actually had for a while, I've had these, these are metal, so I had these when they first came out, when the the first waves of, um, the, or the second wave of models came out. So these are the metal ones, and I really like these, I think the detailing and the sculpts are really nice. So um, so these are the kind of the dismounted version of the, those cav, which you can, to be fair, you could just, if you take the horses away, you could just use these as skirmishers as well, so you don't need to use them as cav, you could have them as skirmishers. And again, the horse models are really nice. And again, that's just contrast paint. So not too difficult to do. Didn't take too long. I mean, these are taking probably a couple of days to do, which isn't, you know, a couple of days for a regiment. That's pretty good. And then um, finally, I did these uh, skirmishes. And again, I didn't, I did, to be honest with you, out of all the models that you get, these are the plastic ones again. I didn't, they're okay actually. And I think once they're on the base, it's not all done. They look all right, but they're not the greatest. I found there's a lot of um, clean up, clean up on them, and the mould lines right down the middle of the hats and stuff like that. So a bit fiddly to to do, but you know they're nice. And I quite like the fact that it was only what uh, 18 models to get a regiment out, which is you know, compared to 60 models, it doesn't take as long to paint. Um, so they're nice as well. And again, some more variety. So it's not all just ranks and ranks and ranks of men. You've got some skirmishing uh, types as well, which is nice. And just where I am as well, I showed you that uh, as well as regiment, but I'm also doing there the skirmishes for the uh, for the Union. And again, I've tried to space them a little bit differently. So I've got some kind of further back, just trying to, again, mix up where they are on the stand, just to break it up a little bit on the table. Okay, so that's my units. But what I've also been working on, so for the next battle, um, I'm looking at having something that's based around a farm. Um, so I've been working on some scenery for this. Um, 
So, and recognizing as well that cornfields were, looks like were a big deal in the American Civil War. So this is my first cornfield, which I finished. Now this is dead simple. I'm not gonna, I'm, by the way, I don't really do painting guides or modeling guides. There's plenty of other people on the internet um, and YouTube that are better than me. Um, but this was really simple. The only thing I would say, I used quite thin MDF and once you glue, when you start gluing and PVAing and using these kind of spray washes to seal, they do tend to warp. So I think if I did these again, I would do it in a slightly thicker, maybe a five, um, six mil uh, MDF. But I've, they're, they're okay now. I've had to put them on book, I've put books on them and to do that. Now this is dead simple. I mean, what I've used firstly is these are the Sarissa sawtooth fencing that you get with the the, uh, the wall and stuff. And I saw, I saw a couple of people talking about this. When you put them together, they're fine. That's how you do it. You just kind of stagger them along. But you can see how sharp that angle is. It's really acute. It's 90 degrees virtually. So when you put them down, they've, they've, it keeps them stable. But if I've got a unit, I'll just grab a unit here. Um, you kind of like, it pushes units quite far apart. So if you're attacking there, there's a, quite a big gap there. And it really takes up space. So what I did was um, you can cut, basically you can cut this, this bit here and this bit here. You have to be really careful with it. And that bit opens that gap up. And what it allows you to do is this, which is basically make them uh, wider. So I've got the comparison there. You can see that's, um, the other one was at a right angle. So you can see the difference. And I think it looks, and also it means you can kind of like make them a little bit different, or each one's not quite the same. Um, you know, stack one on there like that as well. This is just glued on. And then I just painted them, weathered them down with a bit of um, a bit of dry brushing as well, just to weather them up a bit. And I literally use this stuff from Woodland Scenics. It's basically this blended turf that just goes on the bottom. And then this coarse turf stuff, which is basically my uh, yellow grass. Uh, which is basically um, the corn. So, you, I mean, you, there's no point modeling cornfield up here where they can't walk through it. So it's supposed to be a, so that you can use in a battle. So I also made sure I could get a regiment on there. So in terms of the width and also this way as well. So you can, you, know, you can get them either way on the, on the actual piece of scenery. I've got about four or five of these done now. And I have to say that from it, uh, in fact, this one's in the last battle report, you'll see it in the corner. They look really effective for the scale. Um, I think they're fine. And I think just doing that little bit of work on the fencing does make a difference. Um, I did sprinkle a bit of just green, light green um, flock on as well, which is, uh, but that was dead simple. That took, you know, not long at all. Like I say, apart from the MDF base, um, the actual process wasn't that much. I also did some uh, ploughed fields. So these are ones where they're just meadows more, a meadow style feel, field. Um, let's get that in focus. There we go. Um, and again, same thing. So just to, just have a bit of variation on the battlefield. And again, that's just this. Um, that's that earth blend. Um, and again, I've just got a green flock that I just sprinkled round. And I use this this sealant, this uh, matte scenic sealant, which is basically a PVA water kind of mix. I'll probably do that myself, to be honest, but it's easy to buy. And then just spray that all on, seals it all in. Jobs are good, and as they say. So I've got about five of these done ready for the next battle report. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably it for today. Just to hope you that was useful for somebody. Um, and next battle report I'm currently working on should be ready uh, in about two or three weeks time. Um, and I said that's gonna be slightly larger as well. I'm going for a six by four table this time around because my units and regiments are growing. Um, so that's about it. Before I go, just one quick one I don't, just do American Civil War. I also do Napoleonic gaming. So I have got, um, I'm in the process of just uh, doing my first, um, I've been putting these off for such a long time. These are my first uh, Highland regiments. And as you can see, I've got this far now. I'm now gonna do my Nemesis, which is the kilts. So I found a really good painting tutorial online. I'm gonna follow. Um, so that's just the undercoat, but um, I'll see, I'll, this will be another, set of videos I'll do but on the Napoleonics as well but anyway that's it enough for today hope you enjoyed that and catch you soon cheers